If you open your Python shell and type a equal to 0.1, printing a will show you that a in fact holds the value 0.1. Setting a to 0.1 plus 0.1 will now show you that a is holding the value 0.2. So far, so good. Naturally, if we set a's value to 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, it is safe to guess that a will now contain the value 0.3, right? However, that's not quite the case. As you can see, a is now holding not exactly the value 0.3, but a value that's ever so slightly bigger than that. In fact, if I try to compare 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 to 0.3, get ready for it, we'll get a false output. Now, the hasty amongst you will call this behavior weird or faulty and might even categorize it as an issue or a bug. In this video, I will show you that this is in fact neither of those and that this is the most natural thing to expect from such a system. We will understand exactly why this happens, how it's an inevitable limitation in most programming languages, and of course, how to properly deal with it by presenting several solutions that are both applicable in any language as well as Python-specific solutions. Let me start off by going over a concept that I think every computer scientist has to deeply understand. The machines we all use are binary systems which can only store data in the form of a 0 or a 1, which is what we call a bit. Which means that every piece of data, regardless of its type or what it represents, be it images, videos, PDF documents, even your most complex games, are all at the end of the day a very smart way of ordering a series of zeros and ones. Let's take images for example. We humans have an innate ability to process images, are able to see them, as well as store them in our memory in a way that we don't even understand. A natural question that arises here is how would we go about storing that data and later down the road visualize it on binary machines? Well, we define a way to encode this real data into our machines by assuming that an image is a matrix of pixels where each pixel is represented by three values, the intensities of the channels red, green, and blue. Then we would store all this information in an ordered manner on our machines and then we successfully stored or encoded real image data into a binary machine. When it comes time to visualize this data, we would read out all of its binary information, reconstruct each pixel, place all the pixels in their appropriate positions and voila, we would be able to see our images on our machines. This is what we call decoding binary data. So, what we humans see, comprehend, and process is not directly compatible with binary machines. We first have to encode this information in order to store it on such machines, and then decode this information back so that we are able to comprehend it once again. And the ultimate goal is for this reproduction of data to resemble as closely as possible our original data, and to minimize as much as possible the loss or precision of the original data during the processes of encoding and decoding. Going back to our original observation, here we are dealing with real numbers. Real numbers are infinite, as a real number can be as precise as your imagination can allow you to imagine it. Thus, it would be impossible to represent all the values a real number can take up, which are infinite, on a system that is finite. In fact, let's take our own system which we humans have used since the dawn of time to represent numbers and perform mathematical operations, the base 10 system. This system states that each digit can have an integer value ranging from 0 to 9, so having 10 possibilities. If I tell you to represent or encode the value 1 over 2 in this system, it's pretty easy, right? It's 0 0.5. 1 over 5 is 0 0.2. Great. What about 1 over 3? How would you represent this value using the base 10 system? Well, you could type out 0 0.3, but that's not really correct, is it? 0.33 is better, but still way far off. You can keep on adding 3s and you'll certainly improve the precision of your response, but you will never be able to represent the exact value of 1 over 3 using the base 10 system while writing this value on a finite set of papers. And this is the case for many other values such as 1 over 6, 1 over 7, 1 over 11, and the list goes on of values that cannot be represented in a finite manner in a base 10 system. If you look closely, you'll notice that all of these values contain a part that keeps on repeating infinitely, which is what's preventing us from representing them in a finite number of digits. Well, as it turns out, the binary system or base 2 system suffers from pretty much the same limitation, albeit it being more accentuated as there are more values in the system whose representation contain a never-ending repeating sequence. Just like in base 10, 1 over 3 can never be represented fully in a binary system, so no matter what we do, we will be writing down an approximation of its value. 
but this is also the case for some other values such as 1 over 5 or 1 over 10, both of which show the same phenomenon in a base 2 system. That being said, we will try our best to store the most precise approximation given the available space. In Python, and to encode real numbers into the float data type, a standard called IEEE 754 is adopted. And more precisely, floats in Python are stored using 64 bits, which is commonly referred to as double precision. This gives us an approximate precision of 16 in the number of decimal digits. So going back to our Python shell, when we write down a equal to 1 over 10 or 0 0.1, Python will take this real number 1 over 10 and try its best to represent it in its binary system following the IEEE 754 standard. As 1 over 10 is a non-terminating value in binary, Python will inevitably have to truncate the value after 64 bits of information and store the best possible approximation. You could even think of that as a form of compression of the data to fit in the available space. Now when it comes time to print A and visualize its value, Python will decode its binary data in order to show us a value we humans can interpret. However, here we can clearly see the exact value 0.1 printed in front of us, right? But we just said that 0.1 cannot be represented exactly in a base 2 format. Well, what's happening here is that Python is rounding off the value printed up to 17 digits by default. So if we force the printing to show us 50 digits after the points, we will see that this value is not exactly 0.1, but a value that's super close to it, so we might as well print it as being 0.1, as most people wouldn't care about that much precision anyways. So to recap. Imagine the real value 1 over 10 as being analogous to a real image. We'll first have to encode this information into our binary system, possibly losing some precision in the process. Then we will have to decode this back to something we can interpret that hopefully resembles as closely as possible our original real data. And now that you understand this, it starts to make much more sense why this operation returned the following. As 0.1 cannot be precisely represented with floats, its actual value will be a very close approximation. This approximation will, by definition, contain some imprecision, which is this part of the value. However, when we print 0.1, it is shown to us as exactly 0.1 because Python is rounding it off at 17 digits. And as there are only zeros there, nothing else is shown. When we add up 0.1 three times, however, we will be multiplying by three our imprecision, thus resulting in a big enough imprecision that makes its way into the first 17 digits, which is shown when printing the value in Python. That's pretty good, right? You always have to distinguish between what is actually stored and what you see in front of you. Also, if we print the actual value stored for 0.3, we'll see that the closest approximation Python came up with is a value ever so slightly smaller than 0.3. And as the closest approximation of 0.1 is a value ever so slightly bigger than 0.1, adding up 0.1 three times will result in a value that's slightly bigger than 0.3, as we've seen right here. And this is exactly the reason why 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 is not exactly equal to 0.3. Congratulations, you now understand this fundamental topic in computer science, but this doesn't change the fact that comparing 0.1 times 3 to 0.3 will give you a false result. Does this mean we're stuck with this limitation and can't do anything about it? Well, of course not. Let me walk you through my recommendations and several solutions in this second part of the video. First off, all the limitations we discussed are specific to the float data type both in Python and in all programming languages implementing the binary formats from the IEEE 754 standard. In fact, there's a whole website called 0.30004.com that shows you the behavior of various languages in regards to this limitation. Here we can see how in C++, adding 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 would give us this same result we saw in Python. And the same is observed in other languages such as Go and Java. So whenever you are using floats, you should always be aware of their limitations and make sure they are the good choice to pick, which to be fair in most scenarios they are. If for example you are using floats to calculate the average grade of students to later on visualize it, or to compute the position of an object that you want to place in an image, then by all means go ahead and use floats with peace of mind. 
But if your goal is to perform equality checks, decide whether someone should fail or pass based on their grades, or perform high precision calculations that can't allow such imprecisions, then for sure you'll have to take your precautions and implement at least one of the following solutions I will propose. The first and probably the best solution is to completely avoid using real numbers whenever possible. This is in fact what is done in the vast majority of banking systems. Bank accounts are something you should really be precise about. If I deposit 30 cents in my account, I expect to be able to make a purchase with the 30 cents and not get told that my balance is slightly less than that. For this reason, and instead of storing monetary values in float formats, banks can benefit from the fact that the smallest unit of precision in our accounts is the cent. You'll never have half a cent in your account. Thus, balances are stored in cents as integers, making additions and subtractions much more stable, as integers don't suffer at all from the limitations I explained in this video. And whenever we want to visualize our accounts, they'll simply divide the value by 100 and show us the amount in dollars. The same thing is also adopted in Bitcoin. Whenever you perform a Bitcoin transaction, the actual information within the blockchain will store the amount of Bitcoin in a unit called Satoshi, which is the smallest unit of Bitcoin currently supported. The second solution, and if you cannot convert your data to integers, is to keep on using floats but rounding your values to a certain level of precision. As we saw earlier, both of these two values are super close to 0.3 but not exactly equal to one another. So if we round both values to say 5 digits, both will round up to 0.3 and thus be equal. And here you go. Another thing that can also be done in equality checks is to check whether two values are close enough to one another rather than exactly equal to one another. For that, we can use the isClose method from the built-in math module. isClose will take as input two values to compare, as well as the amount of difference between the two values we are willing to tolerate in order to consider them equal in our application. So here, feeding in A and B and setting the absolute tolerance equal to 0.401, meaning we will allow the two values to differ by a maximum of that much before stopping to consider them equal, and we can see that this also outputs the value true. Finally, you could store your data in Python using alternative data formats such as decimal and fraction. Decimal is a module in Python that, and I quote, is based on a floating point model which was designed with people in mind and necessarily has a paramount guiding principle. Computers must provide an arithmetic that works in the same way as the arithmetic that people learn at school. All of that to basically say that decimal is an encoding of real numbers that basically mimics our own base 10 system on binary machines. Meaning that 0.1 for instance can be precisely represented. While it surely provides a higher degree of precision on many values, keep in mind that this module will ultimately inherit the limitations of the base 10 system, which as I've previously mentioned in this video, is still a finite system with its own limitations. Sure, you will now be able to represent the exact values of 0.1 and 0.2, which is not possible using floats, and operations will match up what you would expect using the base 10 system on a piece of paper. Keep in mind, however, that you still won't be able to represent values such as 1 over 7 or 1 over 9. For that, use the fraction module. Another really cool thing in the decimal module is that you can play around and manually set the precision of decimals in your code, dynamically augmenting the number of bits Python uses to store them, giving you full control of the desired precision. That being said, decimals can be slower than floats to work with, so it's really up to you to weigh in the benefits it provides. That's it for this video, I really hope you learned some new and insightful ideas throughout my explanations. I always try to do as much research as possible before every video, but there's still a chance I might have missed something crucial. If I did, please mention it in the comments below, subscribe to the channel as this would really help me out on my journey, and as always, don't forget to like if you want to learn even more Python.